I just listened, by the way, to uh, a Theo Vaughn podcast with you did. your friend George Kittle. And I, I actually was going to open that, open this podcast by uh, shouting those two out for saying some very nice yes, things about me, which I appreciated. But uh, yeah, Gbo, take it over. What would you hear? No, I mean, I just so first of all, you're friends with Theo Vaughn. This is news to me. Yeah, that's one of my buttons. <laughs> yep, that's a that, buddy of mine. Doesn't surprise me. I feel like, <laughs> like you guys would click very well together. Well, how did you meet Theo? So I knew that Theo liked jujitsu, right? right? And so let me take you back. Jujitsu has brought me on a on a really wild path. That's why I, I recommend it to everybody. Um, anybody who will listen because of what it could do for your mental health, your physical health, and just the people who you will have in your life because of jujitsu. I met my coach Bo. So when I went to get my dog, when my dog died, I went into uh, one of the one of the worst places you can be in life. Um, had to move home for a couple months because I like couldn't I couldn't be trusted to not to not just call it quits, man. Um, and came back, got my hand tatted, and my girlfriend Kaylee was like, "Listen, man, like you're you're still not." doing good and you've been talking about how much you want to do jujitsu like she was pushing me to do it my tattoo artist d- does jujitsu okay. and he was talking to me about it and he was like man i can't recommend it enough so then i go i ask him for a recommendation his gym was like 90 minutes away from me i was like you got anything else he said i've heard of this other place called j pages I said cool say no more uh, the next day that they had, I think I got my hand tattooed and then I waited a few days, um, say like Friday, I went, it was a Friday. And, uh, the first guy I ever met was the, the, the guy who basically took over the role as my dad. Uh, his name's Bo. He's been on this podcast and I met him and I could just tell like he was a different type of dude. Uh, little and pretty intimidating especially when you don't actually know him Mm -hmm. um and the very first day instead of the the guy who owns the gym teaching bo was teaching on fridays and just happened to meet him first day by chance and the rest of the story is history with me and bo like i said he's he's honestly like my dad at this point um training at his gym and or not his gym at the gym he invited me to afterwards ryan bader's gym bo now basically implements the most important thing in my life which is jujitsu and structure because without that like the rest of me can't exist I, i'm too much of a head case like if i don't have <laughs> if i don't have jujitsu and structure everything else fails okay and then he brings me to a gym where the people it's it's an invite only type of deal and the people in there are very much like family so i get in a very down uh down in the dumps time in my life i get adopted into this family in which i really really needed met some awesome people then uh fast forward you know 18 months or so i'm about to move out to nashville and the bow happens to have gotten his black belt from a coach who lives in Nashville and is the basically head instructor at Nashville MMA. Okay. So I, I link up with Sean Hammonds, who is the Bo's, uh, the guy who gave Bo's black belt. And he says, yep, come to Nashville MMA and bang, they, uh, they adopted me pretty much they really liked me because i would train hard and i was a good training partner and stuff so fit into that place really really well um and all of a sudden one saturday morning uh we're at an open mat and i i was i don't know if you know much about like uh grappling but i had my i had a neon belly position which is i'm on the top and i'm a transition from belly. his side to to jamming my knee in his in his stomach okay. controlling yeah. his posture and I had knee on belly and I was just kind of looking around and in the door walks Theo. And I was like, <laughs> no shit, the rat King. <laughs> and, uh, and we get to talking and I was like, dude, I have this hair because of you. I was no, like, sure. I loved your mullet so much that I grew a mullet. And he goes, well, I'm sorry. And like, that was our first, 
interaction. And then, uh, you know, over the, the few months, he kept coming intermittently to the gym and we would train together and he would, he would kind of ask me for instructions or I would help him through with things throughout roles and stuff. I really appreciated that. Uh, we became friends. Um, yeah, hung out a little bit, hung out a little bit in Nashville. And then that's the story, man. Yeah, yeah. Jiu-jitsu that, and Theo Vaughn uh, that, were. That's super funny because he, he's definitely too, like you got, you're literally in the middle of a grapple and you spot him. Like he's a super identifiable person. Mm-hmm. It, you, it's hard to, there's n- never a time where someone else walks into a room. You're like, is that Theo Vaughn? You just know it is. Like, and it's really very, great seeing him in a gi. I can't imagine him doing anything besides like telling crazy stories. Like I can't imagine him grappling with someone. Funny thing about Theo, freaky strong legs for a normal dude. Oh, I bet. I mean, he's a like a one in a million type person. That doesn't surprise me. That he's got a bunch of like I I he strikes me as someone that if you knew him growing up, he was probably like really good at everything, and he you, you just was, didn't yeah. you just didn't understand how. That's that's what he strikes me as, but that, that's insane. I mean, I I like that was I I knew I assumed that George just brought you up and he was like, oh, who's Drake? I didn't realize that Theo was like, what about Drake? What's he up to? Like yeah. on the George Kittle interview, that's crazy. I had no yeah. idea. Me yeah, and Theo were buds. You're, <laughs> you're a celebrity. Like you're, I'm you're not. big time. I'm a guy. So do you know you how were... many people listen to that podcast? Yeah, I do. <laughs> like you, <laughs> you're kind of big time. He shouted out Washer Walk-Ons, too. I know about that. If you knew about that, I mean. No, I, I heard that, yeah. He shouted but out I mean, you, too, G-Bone. No, he did not. You're part of the Washer Walk-Ons, dude. He shouted out the uh, brand. I, I know, but he didn't say, oh, yeah, and then there's this rat uh, producer, G-Bone, <laughs> on there. Like that uh, – you gave me a, a mini heart attack there because I did – I was listening to it right before this. And I, <laughs> I stopped it when I thought it was over, and I was like, oh, gosh, did I miss it? <laughs> I was like, uh, but that I, would have been awesome. That's, that's so, how – listen, uh, man. That, you, I, see, that's already too egotistical for me though, to even consider that, <laughs> that that would ever happen. So I'm a guy, I'm, I'm the furthest thing from a celebrity, right? I'm a guy who is the, just like the picture of not quitting and not taking no for an answer. Fair like enough. I had a, a bulletproof ego until I got to college, but my bulletproof ego and my inability to listen to people tell me, no, you're like, you're not going to make it. That ego just drove me to never, ever take no for an answer and never quit and be like, fuck you to everybody. Right. So I'm a product of a fucking Superman type high school ego and grit. And that has met had that grit and teenage ego and testosterone Fair got enough. me to the point where I got to meet people and know people who are just you know, it's not about what you know it's about who you know you, you know what and you're like you're you're almost a modern day like Forrest Gump but it's all the call me Forrest Gump dude yeah he, at the Oscars or whatever over the weekend they're probably like oh did you did you see Drake the other weekend did you see Drake <laughs> <laughs> like you got like uh what is it like Javier Bardem meet sees DiCaprio for the first time in five years like do you know who I saw when I was in Scottsdale Drake oh my gosh I saw Drake too like, <laughs> they all I can see like they all just know this one guy Drake Kulik, out of nowhere like I, I could see that as a thing where it's like no like if you go on the internet like you could you can Google Drake Kulik. It's like football, Iowa, Washington walk-ons. But all the celebrities know it's like, no, that's bodyguard for hire, Drake Kulik. When, you need, when you're in a scuffle, Drake Kulik shows up and he's there. He's, he's How funny there. was that story? That was insane. And that yeah, was – That actually like, happened. Now that, now that I know you, maybe if I listened to that five months ago, I'd be like, I don't know if that happened. Now that I know you and I talk to you every week, I didn't – that was like, that's 100%. Like that, that could be just – that was a slow Tuesday for Drake Kulik. So they, just, <laughs> it was funny. So – for the most part, nobody bugged George because there were so many obnoxiously famous people there, right? Like, right. G-Bone, I was four feet away and had a cordial, like, hello, head nod with Serena Williams. Okay. See, you're Forrest Gump. This is... Like, there were, there were people, there were people in my presence who, or I was in their presence, I guess I should say who I just don't belong around, right? I'm a normal cat. I can't 
yeah. stress that enough. I'm no, I'm just the guy. I'm the jujitsu nerd. I'm the gym rat yeah. who I guess has a magnetic type of personality, but it's a perfect way to describe it. Perfect. For the most part, he was unbothered, but then on the way in, there was cameras everywhere, but we were able to just kind of group up, surround him, walk through. Mm -hmm. And then on the way out, it was obnoxious because there was just everybody who wanted to see the celebrities. They knew they would be coming out at the end. So there was just people with cameras everywhere. It seemed yeah. like, you know, seemed like TMZ. scummy TMZ type people. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we about got to the, um, the exit door and I was like, yo, hold up, jumped in front. And we walked through the door and I was just kind of like pushing people aside. And then two guys that I like pushed aside, then scooped behind me and stuck cameras in George's face. And then he's like, yo, can I walk? And I turned around, I was like, whoa. And I tried to like split them with my hands and they wouldn't move. And so the dude who, I mean, my left elbow is primed. You're right? I like the jab, but I wasn't going to throw the jab. So I just hit him with like a liver shot, left elbow, and the kid dropped. Dude, yeah. The elbow is almost so much worse. Like if you get jabbed, it's like, oh, that was a clean – like that's a clean move. Like you'd almost expect it. But like when you get hit with a, an elbow there, I mean it's like I, like you, you – one, you weren't expecting it. Like yep. if anything, when he's in that situation, he's like, maybe I get punched. Who knows? But then I have a cool story. He was not expecting forearm shiver from Drake Kulik. What's up, everybody? What you just watched was a short, truncated version of our extra show that we do every week. We call it DHT. It's Dickhead Tuesday. It's sort of on brand for the walk-ons, and it's the extra podcast that Drake, myself, and now Gary the Intern do every single week that's on our Patreon uh, services, part of our Patreon tiers at the second and third level. Patreon is where we put all of our extra content, okay? The Monday and the Thursday episodes, those are always going to be free forever and always for our washed-up walk-ons army that's out there and loves the show. But for those who want more, for those who want to help contribute and they like extra shows like this, you may be interested in this content. It's a little bit more not safe for work, if you will. Uh, you can see here, this is our, our mascot for the DHT, Goopy, and uh, access to items like this as well as other exclusive items are also perks that you get with the Patreon as well as discounts on all of the merchandise that we put out throughout the year. Um, merchandise that you can find in our 24 seven storefront right now. If you're part of the Patreon, you basically pay for your subscription with the discounts that you'll get on the merchandise. Not to mention you get ads or uh, ad free episodes, early access to the episodes, immediate access to the video versions, access to our private discord, our fantasy football leagues, and a whole lot more. And that's all on top of the fact that you're donating to the kids. You're helping us with our mission to donate thousands of dollars to the UI Children's Hospital every single year. So if you like what you saw here and you like what you're hearing from me, take this moment to head on over to patreon.com slash washed up walk-ons and you can find a tier, a subscription level that fits for you. And we'd love to have you on the walk-on army. Thank you so much. Click around, find some of our other videos as well. And, uh, We'll be seeing you soon.